Hi guys, okay, two things we're gonna to do today. I am going to uh, ominously remind you you have a midterm coming up. And then I'm gonna tell you about some uh, shortcuts you can use for doing truth tables. So just a reminder, so here I'm on the homepage of, on Canvas. If you go over to modules and scroll down, we had our key notions, truth functional logic, truth tables. This is where we are so far. Um, we are going to start in on natural deduction um, there are already videos on natural deduction um, that I recorded last year. The facts haven't changed. Uh, but you'll see in week six, right now it's week four. Um, I'm recording this on Wednesday, the 17th of February. Um, that is the middle of week four. On Monday of week six, you're going to have a midterm. Um, if you click through to the practice test page, you'll be able to see something very similar to the midterm we're having this year, the, the midterm from one, two, three years ago, 2018. Um, you're going to see the kind of questions that you'll get on this year's midterm. But do notice that we're going to get a slightly different um, number of each kind of question. So, so pay attention to how many questions and what they're worth, how many questions you're going to get and what they're worth. Um, and you can proportion your uh, revision efforts accordingly. So, okay, I'm going to uh, take you through to look at that midterm test, the practice test, um, today and use that as a jumping off point for uh, figuring out how to do, oh, I'm getting stuck here, uh, how to do uh, shortcuts on truth tables. So part of the reason I'm bringing this thing up, the practice test, is I want to show you how you can tell um, when is the right time to use these shortcuts. So, okay. Um, so you know, the, the format of this test looks a little bit different from how you're going to get it because this was something that we did on paper in class. You're going to be doing yours as a take home thing. You will uh, download it from Canvas and then you'll have um, three days, 72 hours from the time you download it to upload your answers in whatever format you like. We can talk more about that if you like. Okay, so some symbolization things. Okay, here are two different uh, sets of instructions I want to contrast. So notice here, this thing that's question four, the instruction is provide a complete truth table for the following sentence. If I tell you provide a complete truth table, you must provide a complete truth table. That means no shortcuts. The kind of shortcuts that we're looking at here um, are shortcuts that allow you to uh, get an answer from a truth table. That is apply a truth table test without completing the truth table. So truth table tests are uh, ways of using a truth table to test whether uh, in this case, whether a sentence is a tautology, contradiction, or contingent, uh, you can use a truth table to test an argument to see whether it's valid or invalid. You can use a truth table to test a collection of sentences to see whether they are consistent or inconsistent. Uh, you can use a truth table on a pair of sentences to test whether they're equivalent or not equivalent. Okay, so if your instruction is provided a complete truth table, you have to do a complete truth table. On the other hand, if the instruction is complete as much of the truth table as needed to show your answer is correct. So in this case, I just ask you, is the argument valid? Complete as much of, a tr of the truth table as you need to to show your answer is correct. You can use a shortcut here. That means you don't necessarily need the whole truth table. Okay, I'm gonna paste this over onto my whiteboard and I will see you over there and we will get to work on this thing. There we go. Okay, into the whiteboard. Here's our argument. Let me space that out so we can see these things separately and we are going to do our truth table shortcut. Okay, here's how this works. We're gonna start out the way you always start your truth tables. That is by collecting up all of the different atomic sentence letters that appear in here. So in this one, we have an A, a B, a C, a D. Uh, that's it. So we have those four, A, B, C, D. Okay, there we go. Uh, let's do like this. Okay, I'm gonna draw some lines just to keep things separate. Oops, I want that to be black. There we go, draw a line, separate out, straight lines. Premise, premise one, premise two, and conclusion. Okay, now, this is an argument. Premise, premise, conclusion. There's your therefore sign that tells you this thing is a conclusion, not just some random other sentence. If it's an argument, the question we're asking is, is this valid or invalid? Also, the question asked us, is this valid? 
the way you check whether an argument is valid is you ask, is there a row where you get true, true, false? That is, is there a row where the premises are true and the conclusion is false? No other kind of row matters. It doesn't matter what other kinds of rows the truth table has. If it has a row like this, true, true, false, then the argument is invalid. If it has no row like this, then it's valid. No other combination of truth values matters, only TTF. So that's how we're going to do a shortcut. I'm going to plug in, suppose premise one is true, suppose premise two is true, and suppose the conclusion is false all on the same line. I'm going to try and work backwards from assuming that to figure out what truth values each of those atomic sentences would have to have. And that, if it works, if I get truth values for A, B, C, and D that make it so that I get true, true, false, then I know there's at least that line of the truth table. If it turns out that, um, if it turns out that uh, there's no possible combination of truth values, well, that tells me that the argument is valid. Uh, but for this midterm question, since it said complete as much of the truth table as you need to show that the argument's valid, if it turns out the argument is valid, then you are going to have to complete it. Okay, let's do this thing working backwards. So we have these uh, three sentences. I'm assuming this is true, this is true, this is false. First thing I'm going to do as I start trying to work backwards is identify the main connective in each one. So this here is an or sentence. This is an arrow sentence. And this is also an or sentence. Okay, next thing I'm going to do is think about my uh, various rules for those main connectives. The truth table for or is true on three of four possible lines, right? The only way to make an or sentence false is to make both sides of the or false. Likewise, with an arrow, the only way to make an arrow sentence false is if the antecedent is true and the consequent is false. The other three possible combinations, both true, both false, or false antecedent and true consequent, those all go true. Okay, again, over here we have an or. So that tells me, working backwards starting from number uh, premise one or from premise two might be difficult because there's three different ways to make this thing true. Either C is true, and B and not A is true, or C is false, and that's true, or C is true, and that's, that's a bunch of things. But on the other hand, over here, I have an or sentence that's false. There's, I just said, there's only one way to make that or sentence false, and that's if both sides are false. I need to have not A false, and I need to have not B false. The only way for not A to be false is for A to be true. So I can already come back over here and say, well, if I've got true, true, false, I must have A true and B false. Why is A true? Because not A is false. Okay. And now I can take those truth values I've figured out for those atomic sentences and plug that into these other premises. So A is true. B is false, so then not A is false. So for this thing in the brackets, I have false and false, that's false. But I want to make sure that this OR sentence is true. So what would C have to be? Well, if C is true, then I have true or false, that's true. If C is false, then I have false or false, that's false, so C has to be true. So I can fill that in over here too. Okay, next sentence. So I know A is true, I know B is false, I know C is true. I don't know about D yet. Maybe I'll be able to figure that out. So B is false, so that means not B is true. So here in these brackets, in these brackets, I have true by conditional true. If you check the truth table for the double arrow, that's true. So I have something arrow true. Um, if you look at the truth table for the arrow, then, well, both false arrow true, that gets you true, true arrow true, that also gets you true. 
So it looks like actually no matter what D is, this sentence is already guaranteed to be true just by having A true, B false, C true. I get true here. So let's put both of those in. D could be true or it could be false. Okay, here's what I think I've done. I have worked backwards from assuming that I have both premises true and the conclusion false to figure out two different rows of the truth table that would give me that. If I have true, false, true, true for A, B, C, D, or if I have true, false, true, false for A, B, C, D, either way, I'm going to get this premise true, this premise true, this premise false. So that tells me it is possible to have true premises, false conclusion for this argument, which tells me the argument is invalid. On the midterm, I would need to see, I as a marker would need to see uh, that you have marked down, you've given at least one row of the truth table that is in fact one where you get true, true, false. So if you gave me, um, oh, and do make sure, if I ask you on a question, is this argument valid? Somewhere, as well as doing the truth table, you write the word invalid or valid if that's your answer. Make sure that you tell me what your answer is. So, okay, if you wrote this, just this, TF, TT for these guys, and that got you T, T, F, and you said the argument's invalid, you'd get full marks. If you wrote T, F, T, F, and then gave me these truth values and said the thing is invalid, you'd get full marks. If you wrote both of them, uh, you would get full marks and I would be extra impressed. But Remember the instructions said complete as much of the truth table as you need in order to show that your answer is right. Um, one line where you have true premises and false conclusion is enough. Two lines is fine. If you give two lines, great, you're doing okay. Um, but you only need to give one. You are not required to do more than that. Okay, that's how the, that's how the shortcut works. There are similar shortcuts for the other truth table tests. Um, I bet you can figure them out and the, the textbook has a chapter talking about these things. Okay, that's it. I will talk to you guys soon.